Here's a right angle triangle. This angle is 37 degrees. Let's enlarge this triangle. So here's an enlargement. In mathematical terms, we would say that this is mathematically similar to this. Now, what's the same in this larger triangle compared to this smaller one? Well, the angles are. There's 37 degrees, and this right angle will still be a right angle. This angle, which would be 53 degrees, is 53 degrees up here. So the angles have remained the same. The sides haven't. The sides have enlarged, um, so they're not the same. However, something has remained the same about the sides. Now, if we compare, for instance, this shorter side uh, with this side here, um, this side here is roughly three quarters of this side. In the enlarged version, this side here is still three quarters the length of this side. Um, if we divide this side up into four equal parts, then this side with the same length of part would have three of these parts in it. So this side you can now see three parts, this side four parts, where each of the parts is the same length. So that's showing you that this is three quarters the length of this. Or another way of saying that, the ratio of this smaller side to this larger one is three to four. Now, up in this diagram, in the enlarged version, again, if we were to divide this side into four equal parts and divide this into the same length of parts as this is divided, we'd get three parts. Again, a ratio of three parts to four parts. Now notice we're not saying this has length three, this is not length four. This is not length three, this is not length four. But if we consider the ratio, this will be three to four. This will be three to four. So the ratio of these two sides is three quarters. Of these two sides is three quarters. And that hasn't changed no matter what the size of this right angle triangle is. Any enlargement of this triangle here, the ratio of this side to this would still be uh, three quarters. So in a sense, attached to the angle 37, the number three quarters uh, appears coming from considering the ratios. Um, if we were to divide this side up, into equal parts, the same as the other uh, parts, we would find five equal parts and a similar uh, division here if we divide up the longer side, the hypotenuse, into parts the same length as these, we'd find five parts here. So we've got all sorts of ratios. We've got this side to this side being in the ratio of three to five. We've got this side to this side being in the ratio of four to five. So three quarters attached to 37 degrees, three quarters attached to 37 degrees. There's other numbers attached to 37 degrees um, coming from the various ratios when we're comparing a pair of sides in this uh, triangle. Let's go back to the original um, triangle. So here's our 37 degrees. Remember we said we didn't know what this length was. Let's call the length A. We'll measure that as A units. And let's call this length B. And the length of the hypotenuse, the longest side, let's call it C. How many different ratios can we get? Well, we can get B over C. We can get A over C. We can get B over A. We could get C, um, A over B. We could get C over A. And we could get C over B. There are no other ratios. There's six 
possible different ratios. So in essence we're div comparing pairs of sides with respect of ratios and there's six possible ways to do that. Now if we're looking at the angle 37 degrees each of these has a different name. For instance, this is the sine of 37, this is the cosine of 37, this is the tangent of 37, this is the cotangent of 37, this one is the uh, secant of 37, this is the cosecant of 37 degrees. It so happens that the sine, cosine and tangent of 37 are the ones that historically we concentrate they're the three most commonly named ratios in uh, these right angle triangles. So we'll be concentrating on the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. But there are also others, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. There are six names, each one for the, the six different ratios. Now, it is very, very confusing because if we then moved up to this angle here, which is 50, three degrees and we sat up here and surveyed the scenes then this ratio is not the same name as the name of 37 degrees which uh, we said was the sine of 37 uh, b over c in actual fact this now becomes the cosine of 53 degrees so this is the cosine of 53 degrees, it's also the sine of 37. And these names change too if we use this angle. So it depends which of these two angles we're considering what the names of these are. So it does get uh, rather complicated and difficult. So let's just... Um, try and find our way about these triangles. So here we are at this triangle looking at the three sides. One side we can always recognize as being directly opposite the right angle and that's called the hypotenuse. So let me just put HYP for hypotenuse. But that's the name of this side. It's always opposite the right angle in a right angle triangle. If you're sitting here and you look across the triangle to the opposite side, that's what we're going to call this one. It's the opposite. So it's away across from you. It's the opposite side of the triangle. And the one that's left, the one that's right next to you, a word for right next to is adjacent, A-D-J-A-C-E-N-T. So we'll call this side the adjacent. So if you're in a triangle, right angle triangle, and you're at one of the angles, if you're interested in one of the angles, then the three sides of that triangle automatically have names associated with it. So the hypotenuse, always opposite the right angle, the opposite side, way across the triangle at the opposite side, and the, the, the side that's right next to you is called the adjacent. Now, the problem then becomes um, if we change our perspective and we sit up here, that's still the hypotenuse. But you'll notice that the opposite side is now here. So the adjacent is right next to you. That should be up here. This was the opposite now. So notice that the adjacent and the opposite sides have swapped position. So it very much depends on where you are in the triangle what you're calling these three sides. So let's go back to this position and let's recall that 
this at length A, this at length B, and this at length C. And we had various ratios up here. We had B compared to C, B over C. We had A compared to C, A over C. And we had B over A. And we had other ones that we don't name just now, which is A over B and C over A and uh, C over B. Here at this angle, remember that's the hypotenuse. This side is the opposite, and the one right next to you is the adjacent side. So there's the names of the sides if we're considering this 37 degree angle. And here's the naming that goes on. This ratio, this side compared to this one, is called the sine of 37. And it's written S I N 37. The full name is S I N E, but sine of 37, B over C. And that involves the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. There's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. This ratio here is called the cosine of 37 degrees. Cos for short, cos 37. And that involves the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And the last one we're going to name is called the tangent of 37. We write that tan 37 for short. And that involves the opposite divided by the adjacent. So sine 37 B over C, opposite over hypotenuse, cos 37, A over C, that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tan 37, B over A, that's the opposite over the adjacent. How on earth do we remember this? Well, there is one very easy way to remember this, and that's one word. So, ka, toa. Sounds like some Red Indian war chant. Sukatua, Sukatua, Sukatua. So remember it. However you want to remember it, try and remember this word. Because it's got the secrets of how to find the sine, the cos, the tan in any right angle triangle. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The tan is the opposite over the adjacent. All the information you need is in this word. So remember that word and you'll be able to remember this. So Sokatoa. And let's uh, now see how that works in a different triangle. So in this right angle triangle, let's concentrate on this angle. Let's call it x degrees. And let's call the length of the sides P, Q, and R. Now why don't you see, stop the video and see if you can work out what the ratios sine x, cos x and tan x are. Okay, let's try that. So the first thing to do is to think or write down the word so, ka, toa. Now you, you notice I'm raising the O, the A, and the O slightly higher just to remind you that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tan is the opposite over the adjacent. So our first task is, from your perspective here, because you're interested in this angle, what are the names of all these sides? 
First of all, name the hypotenuse. There's the right angle. The side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. From this perspective, all the way across the triangle, that's the opposite side. And from here, right next to you, the one that hasn't been named yet, must be the adjacent. So, if we're asked to find the sine of x degrees, then the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. You say so kato, or you try and practice this so that you see it in your head. So is the part that's got sine in it. It's divided up into, into three sections, this word, the so, ka, and the toa. So so is the part we're interested in here. It involves the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So from here, opposite divided by hypotenuse. That's Q over R. If we're interested, if we're trying to find the sine of x degrees, the cosine of x degrees, then we're up here, so ka, this is the part that we'd be using, ka, cosine, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of x, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, p over r. And the final name that we're interested in for the different ratios in this right angle triangle, the last ratio is the tan of x degrees. So katoa is the part of this word that we're interested in. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So from here, opposite over adjacent. So that's Q over P in this case. So there are the three trig ratios, sine, cos, and tan of this angle X, worked out using this memory system, the word Sokatoa.